Hello and welcome to Team Members Managing Digital To-Dos in a Virtual World. My name is Nathan Austin. I'll be presenting today and Stephanie Kingsley will be behind the scenes producing. <clears throat> so welcome to our December, uh, one of our December uh, sessions uh, working on Microsoft 365. Uh, this one in particular, we've done a lot of these sessions. And this session in particular, the reason why we started with team members is because this really applies to anyone in your organization, not just uh, like department managers or other uh, department heads, things like that, or supervisors, but this really applies to anyone in the organization uh, to helping you manage your, your digital to-dos. Now, there are some components and facets <clears throat> that will require some collaboration with your team, which we'll show you. However, this is really targeted on you as an individual managing all those different ways in which to-dos and actions and requests uh, come at you as an individual and how you can manage those. All right, with that said, here are the things we're going to focus on. This is going to be a how to session. I'm going to actually run through different key problems that we have and show you how to uh, potentially solve those problems. Now, one of the beauties, blessings, and curses of, of the, this kind of technology is that uh, <clears throat> there's a lot of personal preference in here, right? It's one of those, one of the ways we're going to talk about today is managing your email and some of the capabilities inside of Outlook and how that can help you manage some of your to-dos. However, I also understand that Outlook has is a very personal, personalized experience. Uh, so, for instance, we're going to show you how to different component to handle these different types of situations and scenarios. But ultimately, it's up to you to identify which ones are the best fit for you and what works with your workflow and the way you engage and collaborate with other team members. So then once we kind of identify some of those common problems, we're going to focus on three key areas to be able to manage and consolidate your to do's. So we'll walk through that. That'll be a demonstration. We'll go through all those variables. And then at the end, we'll open it up for some Q&A and uh, maybe some suggested next steps um, for those of you who are watching now or listening to the recording in the future. Uh, with that said, for those of you that are watching right now, <clears throat> I would like to encourage you while we're going to go through 30 minutes of content uh, relatively quickly uh, because it's recorded. So you'll be able to go back and watch it if, if you're so inclined and you can pause it or rewatch it and rewind it if there's anything that I'm maybe going a little bit too fast uh, for your comfort during this session. Um, so in addition to that though, at any time if you have questions, please use the Q&A panel. Go ahead and add your question. Even if it comes up now, go ahead and add it now and we will do our best either. Uh, Stephanie will be able to able either answer those offline uh, during the session or we will open it up for questions and then that's where we're going to go through the questions at the end. So I just want to give you the heads up. Go ahead and enter items in the Q&A panel starting now uh, and through the rest of the session and we'll open it up for questions at the end and we'll make sure to answer every single one or take it offline if it, if it uh, might not be pertinent to uh, this particular session. All right, with that said, there's one thing I have to do. One minute about my tech. Uh, we uh, we are not a training organization, even though this is a lot of training and coaching that we do relative to the problems that Microsoft 365 tools help solve. But re we really love to work with small and medium businesses in the technology consulting space. We really try and help um, <clears throat> the uh, the business goals and initiatives that you're driving implement a proven IT strategy that we've learned over the last 20 years that we know can achieve consistent and reliable results for our clients. Um, so ultimately, we believe that what that does is it removes IT challenges. Doesn't mean IT challenges don't ever exist. IT is not perfect. Even if you have a great uh, plan and roadmap and you're following that plan, uh, problems can still exist. But it does mean that we remove most of those IT challenges you experience so that you can focus on serving your clients better and being more adaptable to the other business challenges that exist in this world, like everything that we're going through right now and why we're talking about managing virtual to-dos uh, in this digital world. So ultimately together, working with, with you, um, whether you're a, a prospective client or a client or just a community member, um, if any of this stuff is valuable, we know that our clients can achieve four times more value and productivity from their IT investments by working together and implementing our proven IT strategy. If that's something that sounds interesting, you'd like to learn more about that, whether or not we might be a good fit to help you, please raise your hand and we'd love to chat with you, um, set up a time to have a conversation. If But that's not why you're all here today, so let's move on. Let's dig into the content. OK, so now we're going to talk about common problems uh, re, re, uh, regarding managing tasks and to do's. So the reason why we like to talk about this as opposed to just diving into here's all the interesting features and capabilities of Outlook or Planner or to do. I'm giving you a little foreshadowing here um, is that 
ultimately, even though we all are in different organizations, what we've found in engaging different companies across different industries for the last several years is that we all have a lot of the common problems, no matter what industry we're in or what role we have. So here's some common problems that we've seen across um, the different people that we've worked with. Things like too much email. You know, when I ask people to raise their hand, do you feel you get too much email? Almost everyone's hands always shoot up. Um, how to deal with unread emails. Um, uh, versus, and especially for those of you who, you know, use uh, your mobile to access your corporate email, sometimes you, how do you manage your email on your phone as it relates to maybe your email on in your Outlook? Um, we'll get to that later. <clears throat> That's a common problem. Uh, what about to-dos that are buried in meeting notes? Um, you know, if, if you do take meeting notes, depending on who takes them, where they might be stored, maybe they got sent out in an email trying to pull out the to-dos that are your action items um, to make sure that you're getting those done, as well as if you're a manager or a supervisor who's ultimately responsible for holding people accountable for those to-dos that are buried in meeting notes, that's a really tough thing to do to make sure that you at least have visibility to them. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that today too. Again, we're gonna be focusing on the individual, but they're all related. Um, possibly looking at Outlook tasks and how that might be able to use Outlook tasks if someone, if you like those. Um, there's personal and mobile components that we talked about already. Um, then another thing that I've seen inside of meetings, if you're someone in the organization that might sit at the crossroads of multiple teams or ends up collaborating on different uh, cross-functional teams or maybe you are part of different department meetings, uh, you might have action items that are noted on multiple Excel sheets that are in different folders or even OneNote notes that are in different folders. Um, and you might even have physical notepads on your under desk uh, that have notes. So the challenge that we're talking about is that you as an individual are ultimately accountable to maintaining and managing all this stuff and keeping it organized so that you can actually uh, accomplish the initiatives and the objectives and fulfill the requests that, that have been made of you, um, hopefully with also keeping your sanity. So these are all the problems that, I'm not saying every single one of these problems affect every single person. However, these are some of the common ones that we've heard and experienced and that we'll be talking about different ways to solve them today. All right, without further ado, let's dig into some of the demonstration. <clears throat> so three areas to consolidate your to-dos. All right, I'm gonna start with one of the most common ones, which is Outlook. So I have my demo Outlook environment here, and uh, there's a few things that I'll show you relative uh, to Outlook that might help. So for instance, I've got a couple email strings that I created up here uh, that Stephanie and I uh, went back and forth. It's a little awkward because it's basically just Stephanie and I going back and forth in a couple of our demo accounts and our uh, MyTech accounts. Um, but you'll see that there's, um, uh, uh, email string for annual planning meeting and email string for virtual social outing. Uh, one of the problems that I experience if you're, let's say, attending a session like this or in a meeting or in a planning event or take a couple of days off or are sick, heaven forbid, uh, is that you come back to a lot of emails. So what are some of the tips and tricks you can um, use to help you know, eliminate the, the experience of too much email? So uh, and while I can't necessarily prevent you from receiving the email, I'm, I'm gonna try and give you some tips as far as how to manage those a little easier. And we actually do a full half hour session on this where Outlook, Outlook tips and tricks, Stephanie's gonna be posting that in the Q&A uh, uh, for your reference. And they're in our, it's in our video library if, you, if that's something you'd like to uh, watch and go a little bit deeper. But I'm gonna go quickly through these um, just to provide certain scenarios uh, that are common uh, with managing your email. Okay, so I, I did a couple different strings as I mentioned. One of them because I wanted to illustrate a function that, hey, email string for virtual outing. So if I expand this here, um, it actually shows uh, multiple ones. Uh, I'm the one that sent it and I sent it to myself in a test account um, and another account. So I'm, I'm, I'm going back and forth. Now what I'm gonna do is there's actually some cool capabilities um, up here next to the deleted button. Okay, is that you've got uh, ignore, cleanup, or junk. So uh, this email string, so let's say I've just come back into my office after being in a meeting uh, or, uh, or being gone for a day or something like that. You know, how often do you have like a whole email string of emails that have come back and forth uh, and you wanna minimize maybe the amount of clicks it takes to manage them. So what I can do is if I hit this cleanup button here, uh, and notice there's three emails here and there's, uh, well, there was four, but three unread and three unread emails here. I'm gonna go to the cleanup button 
and I'm going to say clean up conversation. Um, and what it does, it says remove redundant messages in the selected conversation. Uh, basically, uh, it removes them. It moves them to the to the deleted items bin. So I'm going to click that. And so now, notice what it did. It actually um, removed every email but two. So it has the original email that I sent, and it removed the other emails but two. And let's see why. Because this email has every other uh, email communication in the string, right? As I'm going down. Um, and so this is the start. I replied to all here. My my MyTech account replied to all. Another account that I use uh, for this kind of stuff, I replied to all. And then Stephanie replied to all. So this basically, this one email includes all of the communication. So that helped me understand that now I've, I've caught up by basically reading one email instead of reading three or four emails. And then the other one is that why is this one here? Well, the reason why I didn't remove this one is because this one was not a reply to all. This one was just a direct reply that says, hey, I can't make it this weekend, but I'd love to connect some other time. So um, that's an example of where um, you, if you, people use the cleanup, and the couple questions they typically ask, well, what if somebody responds out of band? Well, this is an example of responding just directly instead of replying to all. And so it kept one email that was a reply to all that has all the correspondence from reply to all, and it has the one email that was actually out of band that was just a direct reply, but it keeps it all together. Uh, now, of course, this is, is using a feature uh, called show as conversations. Uh, you can do that without having to show as conversations, um, but that's a feature that some people like as well because it keeps everything consolidated together. All right, so I'm gonna go back to home really quick. And one of the things I'm gonna illustrate on this conversation too is let's say as I, as for instance, if if I'm uh, Nate here that says, or Nathan Austin here that says, I can't make it this weekend, but love to kick sometime soon. What I might do is say, if there's a lot of replies going back and forth on this email string, I might just choose to ignore it. So I'm actually gonna come up here and say, ignore this conversation. It's gonna give me a warning, says the selected conversation and all future messages will move to the deleted items folder. So I'm gonna say, yes, ignore conversation. So now that, that conversation goes away. Now I deliberately chose to do that for one that's more of a social outing uh, or a social get together versus uh, one that's maybe an email string for annual planning meeting. I probably don't want to uh, hit ignore for um, uh, something that might be associated with an annual planning need that I need to participate in. Um, so this is just an example of email strings going back and forth. Um, you can do the cleanup again as well, um, this conversation. You could also say clean up folder, so, uh, or folder and subfolder, so you don't have to like on every conversation click this, but I just wanted to use that as a couple of illustrations. Um, so that basically consolidated every email down to just one email because all the information is pertained in that one email. So again, this is not a way to, um, it's a way to simplify your email, not necessarily managing all the to do's from it, but for instance, let's say I was the one that sent out this email and now that I've gotten everybody's reply, I need to now schedule it. So what I might do is I'm just gonna take this email, I'm gonna click on it, and then I'm gonna drag it down to my calendar down here. Um, so I don't know if you've ever done that, but this is a good time management technique as far as managing you know, um, your, your emails. Uh, if you have a request or an action that comes out of this email, say, all right, I need to move this down to my calendar item. I'm gonna release that. And now it pops up a calendar invite. So I'm gonna say, I need to do that later today. Um, I'm going to do it at 3 o'clock and 3.30. I just need to make sure that I um, schedule schedule the annual planning meeting. So um, again, I could put, give myself more notes if I wanted, but the point is now when I go to my calendar, I now have, um, uh, and it looks like it might have gone to my other calendar. That's the problem with demos. Um, Probably need to pop up this other one. It's probably not a good idea. There it goes. It's this one right here. Um, it's actually uh, this is the one here. So sorry, this actually went to my other calendar, not my. Uh, this is a problem when you have multiple calendars that you're managing, uh, demo accounts, etc. But here's the calendar uh, appointment that came up uh, on my on my um, my calendar. So it makes it really easy. One of the things I like about that. I am trying to not do that, so let me get out of there. Um, one of the things that I like about demos is that when your calendar does that on accident, it starts trying to populate every calendar that you ever have access to ever. Okay, going back to your email. So that was one of the ways, if you haven't done that before, it's a nice little way to manage your to-do is uh, making sure that you assign it to your calendar uh, and, and allocate the appropriate amount of time to do it. That was a trick that if you haven't ever been coached on that before, it was really beneficial for me 
to make sure that I'm I'm not only assigning something for myself to do on a day, but I'm trying to allocate a respective amount of time that it actually takes to do the thing that I need to do. So um, and being able to, especially when those requests come from your email, uh, that's an easy way to be able to do that because it keeps all the history of whatever it was uh, really quickly and easily without even having to copy and paste. OK, so that's one way to look at it. Another way, and I've, I've done that down here, uh, but another way that I could do it is, for, is is basically flagging an email. This also applies to those who use your mobile devices for connecting and, and, and um, reading your email. If you uh, get into the habit of marking things as unread, because that's what I used to do, is I would say maybe I'd read something on my phone and, and I'm thinking to myself, OK, I need to do something with this, but I'm going to wait I need, but I, I want to be in front of my laptop when I do it as opposed to doing it from my mobile phone for whatever reason. So what I used to do is mark that email as unread. The challenge is with that is that if you have emails in your inbox that are unread because you haven't read them and then emails that are in your inbox that are unread because it's something that you are trying to remind yourself to do. Now you're filtering through your unread emails to determine which ones are actually action items versus which ones are ones that you just uh, that, that, that you just haven't read yet or haven't gotten to. So instead of marking them as unread, I would recommend flagging. So another way, instead of dragging this to my calendar, one of the other ways things I could do is I could hit flag for follow up and I could also choose a day, um, say actually, or I could say custom. Uh, let me see, I wanna try and get that done. Uh, I'm gonna do that tomorrow. So I can actually flag that uh, follow up for tomorrow and hit a little reminder tag on it as well. And so now I've created, uh, I've taken this email and I've, I've flagged it for follow up uh, for me to be able to view and notice how it gives me some visual cues and indicators It highlights it um, gives it a slightly different color just like this one that's flagged it gives me a little reminder icon here uh, and it gives me a little flag 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 icon over there so i can actually sort and filter in my inbox by those flagged items and that does come across when you do it if you flag something from your mobile it will show up here in your outlook view as well so those are a couple things to be able to uh, flag uh, or move to calendar uh, versus using unread. Uh, the last little tip here is that this, uh, if you've never used this little um, uh, indicator down here, which is called tasks. Uh, so this is actually something that Microsoft is, they're working on merging. Everything that we're talking about today, they're working on integrating it better. Um, it already is integrated pretty well, but they're working on integrating it even tighter to help out with this stuff. Um, so if you click on tasks, uh, here's a way in which you can um, choose to manage uh, your tasks. Um, so I can say a new task and I can just create a new task for myself, new task. I could say schedule annual, check caps lock and said annual planning meeting. So I just put that on my to do. Of course, scheduling the meeting might be easier than, and I'll say I want to do that. Um, I'll do that later today, for example. Actually, I'll set schedule a couple of days out because I've already scheduled something for today, save and close. So now I've got a new task on my calendar, schedule annual planning meeting. So now I've taken the same task. Now I wouldn't recommend taking the same task and making a calendar appointment, flagging it and creating a task for it. I'm just using that. Pick one of those that you feel uh, is the right fit for you, but this is a way to start. I'm going to tie this all together a little later, but these are some key tips as far as starting to consolidate um, a visibility into your action items and to do's and being able to filter through some of the email noise that uh, most of us, if not all of us, uh, receive um, on occasion or all the time. So now I'm going to switch gears a little bit um, and think about instead of email, go to more team meetings. So if you are in, uh, again, this is another one where we have do multiple sessions on how to manage and run your department meeting <clears throat> within Teams and Microsoft 365. So I'm gonna skip over most of that content and focus on the typical part of a meeting after you've maybe had a discussion or you're dealing with different issues of the day and you've identified, okay, hey, Stephanie, I'll use this as an example. We're having our meeting. <clears throat> We're meeting in the marketing team here. So I'm in, I'm in the Teams section of Teams. Thank you, Microsoft. I'm in, the, I'm in the, my general marketing team channel here. And uh, we actually have uh, different components, different tabs up here at the top uh, that we use to manage our meeting. So we've got meeting agenda and notes, um, which I would recommend taking notes, but not keeping action items to relative to what we're talking about. An issue and discussion list, that's something we build out in SharePoint. Again, I'm not gonna highlight that today because we go into that deeper in other sessions that we've already done, um, but I'm gonna focus on this action item tab. So what we've done is we've actually created a planner 
plan and built it into our marketing team and a part of our marketing team agenda. So that way, when we're sitting down as a marketing team and meeting, we can actually look at different tasks, assign different types of buckets if we want, and assign them to different people, different due dates, and uh, when they need to get done. So this is something very easily. Uh, so I'm gonna say add a task. I'll just say, um, I'm gonna use the same exact task, schedule annual, uh, of course I need to spell annual planning meeting, right? So now I'm scheduling myself a task. If this was, uh, let's say I'm gonna do this by the 11th and I'm gonna assign it to, um, I'll actually assign it to myself just because I've signed all those other ones to myself. All right, I'm going to hit enter. So, um, oops, I actually didn't need to add that person. Standard user, that's a demo account. Um, I'm good, so I'll click enter. That should be good. I should switch due dates on me. There we go, okay, add task. All right, so now if you notice it added the task, but if I just click on it, I'm just clicking into it here, it prioritized. If I click on it, it opens this up, and now I can say start date, due date. I already, I already had the due date in there. I can change the priority. Let's say I need this to be uh, important, um, and maybe I want to add some notes. Uh, see email string um, for availability, right? And then one of the other things I can do is I can actually click this little button here. So notice right now you can't see any of these notes, but once I click this little button here, it'll actually pop up in this space over here. So I'm gonna hit show on card. Now, now any notes that I put in here, it'll it, down here, it'll actually pop up and give me that visibility. That's what I did on these other ones. Um, so now I can um, close it. So that's the way, so let's say I was, we were in our team meeting and that came out of it to say, hey, here's the way you can schedule that task. So now what I'm gonna show you is this is the view of Planner inside of Teams, but I'm actually gonna show you in uh, Planner the web application. So what I've done is I've actually just gone to my Microsoft Office Home. I, uh, so I just logged into office.com and then I click on the little waffle over here and I, I went down to Planner. And so that opened up um, Planner over here in this web. And this is the same plan. If you notice, it uh, looks like I need to hit refresh. Um, because there we go, it didn't show the new annual planning meeting. Uh, so here's the plan that I just added this item in Teams and it's just, it's the same information. Um, but let's say uh, this view here is different and notice because there's different plans along the side. Again, if you're say a member um, in your organization, if you belong to multiple departments or multiple cross-functional groups where you might have tasks assigned to you, this is where you can have visibility to that. Now, if I'm just on the marketing team, I'm gonna switch back to Teams really quick so you'll see the difference. The, this column will be different when you look at it in Teams. So I switch back down to Teams here. You'll notice that this column is my Teams interface, but now I'm only just viewing the action item um, planner, which is part of our marketing team. So if I actually want to view all of the different plans that I'm a part of, I have to go to the web browser, and that's where I will see these different variables, these different capabilities. Um, so the other thing is, if you are part of multiple plans and you have tasks assigned to you from multiple uh, department meetings or multiple group meetings or team meetings, and I would ask you, well, I can't see you, I would like ask everyone listening uh, to the recording or, in, or live right now to raise your hand to yourself and say, are you someone that sits on those multiple meetings? Because how hard is it to be able to manage all these different tasks that get assigned and different due dates and how to get keep visibility to those and at the same time, not just keep visibility for yourself, but have visibility to your other team members to whom you're accountable uh, to get these things done uh, in the time in which you've committed. So uh, one of the ways that Microsoft does this really nice is that if you're on multiple plans, as an example here that I am uh, in, this, in the demo environment here, what I can do is I can go to my tasks and I'm gonna click my tasks. And now what it's gonna show me is all of the planner tasks that are assigned to me across any of the plans to which I'm a part. So, and then I can, um, over here, I can group by progress, I can group by plan, I can group by due date. Um, so I can be sorting and filtering my tasks across the different plans that I have. Um, so that's, now what this takes is for, as a, as a department and really as an organization is to think about using planner consistently because otherwise if one one group meeting that you're part of you have to keep meeting on on a notepad another group meeting you're keeping meetings in an excel spreadsheet and another group meeting you're using planner okay maybe you're stepping in the right direction but you're really not helping yourself out or everybody on the team because this is a great way to give team visibility as well as individual accountability to keep getting these tasks done
So I'm going to show you one last thing before I kind of wrap it all together is if you're in, notice this browser is the new Microsoft Edge browser. So you see this icon down here, um, uh, down here at the bottom. It's the new Edge browser. And one of the features of the Edge browser, which I, which I like, is notice I'm on the planner tab here. Um, if you go up to the little breadcrumbs here in the corner, oops, sorry, I meant to control the breadcrumbs here in the corner, and you click on that, you can come down to the apps. And notice it gives me the opportunity to say, install this site as an app. So it's pretty cool what it does. So I'm gonna click this. It actually now, I'm gonna call it Microsoft Planner, say install. Uh, it now basically um, pops up uh, this web, in a web browser format, it pops up Planner just in a browser, but yet it basically has given it the Planner icon. So if I want to then right click down here, so I'm gonna right click and I wanna say pin to taskbar. So now what I've done is I've created I've actually added Planner to my taskbar at the bottom, even though it's in the web browser, I've basically been able to make it really easy to be able to access the Planner uh, taskbar. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out of that, for example, um, and I notice that my, my, out, my PowerPoint here has not allowed me to, um, there we go. It killed my screen, show taskbar. Okay, so notice I have Planner down here on the taskbar. If I wanna click and open that up, um, now it gives me the planner uh, taskbar here. So, okay, so that's an example of being able to use the Edge, uh, the new Edge browser for that and being able to view web apps and kind of make them almost a, a shortcut application on your taskbar. Okay, so I'm gonna hit here. Um, gonna do that again with my <laughs> PowerPoint. Thank you, PowerPoint. So now what I wanna show you is the one application that really ties these all together. And I'm gonna call it um, uh, to do. Great, thank you, Microsoft, uh, for giving me the update here. 365, continue, I had it logged in and now it's throwing me an error, okay. So uh, the to-do app is also one, and I'm gonna go back to the browser, that you can down put this in the browser. So if you go to Microsoft Office Home and you click on the waffle, scroll down, hit all apps here. If you scroll all the way down, it's alphabetical order, the to-do app. So I've opened that up in the browser already. So I've got the to-do app here, um, but there's also, you can actually install a to-do app. So that's one of the things you can do. If you go to the Microsoft store, uh, you can actually install, it's free, the to-do app. It's also one you can install on your mobile. But the to-do app, when we talked about, it pulls everything together. So when we talked about managing your uh, email, flagging your email, when you talk about putting tasks in Outlook, if you talk about planner um, uh, tasks that are assigned to you, that is basically all right here. So if you wanna look at tasks that are assigned to you, these are your planner tasks that are assigned to you. Um, notice I should have, um, probably has another one um, that I should have should have added for me, unless it hasn't synced, oh, 49 minutes ago, it hasn't synced again. Um, it's trying to sync, thank you demos, of course, I had it logged in and now it's asking me to sync again. Um, so it hasn't synced that planner task yet. Um, but when I look at flagged emails, this is something flagged today. Um, again, it hasn't synced yet, so it hasn't doesn't have the one that I just flagged you know, during the session, unfortunately, um, but other, usually it happens nearly instantaneously. <clears throat> and then tasks, this is also tasks um, that I have created in Outlook when I went and did those tasks. The other thing I really like about to do, so this is a place to consolidate your to-do so you can really look at them um, really easily. And then you can hit, you know, so if you're sitting down at the end of the day or the beginning of the day or the beginning of the week, whatever your rhythm is to try and figure out your planning um, and you wanna click on my day, this basically starts by giving you all of the different items, uh, a lot of the different items that you may have on your to-do list, but it gives you them in a consolidated view so you can say, which ones do I want to get done today? Which ones are the most important ones for me to get done today? And so you could really quick, you come over here, I really need to get that done today. Um, this other one down here, I got oh, this thing, I gotta get this thing done. Um, and this is across the different uh, to-do items that you have. Uh, I gotta get this one done too. Okay, so now I've basically established my day and this is the things that I'm gonna work on. It doesn't mean that I've lost any of these. It actually hasn't removed these from any of these sub lists. It's just given me a consolidated view of my to-dos in a single place. And I know we're running to the end of our time, but I'm, I'm almost done, I promise. So uh, the other thing that I like about to-do 
is it and first of all it works great on your mobile because one of, for those of you who if you're anything like me or have ever done this before where you're maybe um sitting watching tv or mowing your lawn or um you know uh, just doing something uh just totally different than but all of a sudden this idea pops in your head and you're like that note oh i forgot i gotta do this thing for stephanie or i gotta get that one thing done uh for leaf my business partner or or whatever um i can pull up to do uh, what I used to do is put it on a OneNote notepad or I used to email it to myself. Uh, but now I pull up to do and I put it on my to do list. So then when I get to my laptop and I'm planning my day, I have my to do's here. And so I actually like to highlight personal to do's like I put plan a date night. So it could be a personal thing uh, to do with your partner. Um, don't forget this or that other thing. Um, you know, what do you want to get done? Uh, it could be home errands where maybe it's something uh, that you're you're trying to compartmentalize or if there's department notes that you're trying to create. So there's different ways to use to do and these are all creatable. You just add a new list and you can customize that. Um, but it's a way and that all syncs to your phone as well as to your your device here. And so it's a way to consolidate all your action items and be able to have them in a consolidated single view and be able to then manage them much, much um, easier, uh, more easily than um, than trying to manage it across notepads, unread emails, Excel spreadsheets, meeting notes, individual personal OneNote notes, notes or emails that you send to yourself on your own phone. Uh, that's the ways that so it culminates in the to do app. And Microsoft, as I mentioned, is doing a lot more. There it goes, it finally synced. Uh, so now it syncs to that other email that I synced here, email string for annual planning, uh, the schedule annual planning meeting, uh, the task of a schedule annual planning meeting, that all synced over now, um, as I was trying to show you, but it just did it as it, as it just clicked in to sync. So um, anyway, it's, a, it's just the consolidated way and Microsoft is really investing a lot in making sure that the planner uh, that I was just showing you earlier, which gives you team visibility, but yet individual action items. The the way email works together as far as whether you're flagging emails, using tasks, um, those key things that are available in Outlook, and uh, creating your own individual to dos. Uh, they're they're designing those to work much much closer together and work easier for you. So I'm really excited about being able to share this with you today. And as a summary, as we move along here, is it really in email flag versus mark is unread. You know, clean up the conversation so you're making fewer clicks to manage your email. And then if there's emails with actions, you can drag it to your calendar. You can actually also e drag your email to a, a task if you want to make it a task, if you like the task better. You can do the same thing on email. Uh, on team tasks, uh, you can use uh, use Planner. I would highly recommend that. Um, you can sync it to your calendar. Oh, I forgot to note that uh, when you're in Planner, you can actually, when you're on your My Tasks, this little breadcrumb right up here, if you click on that, you can add tasks to your Outlook calendar. So any of these tasks that have a due date on them, it'll actually show up uh, as an overlay on top of your calendar if you so choose to look at that. So you can integrate it here and then choose that as an option in your calendar view uh, to view that. So that's something I forgot to mention, um, but that's something you can do with tasks. And then all of that it then integrates with the to-do app. So you can sync Outlook tasks and flagged emails, planner tasks. You can create your unique to-do list. Uh, and as well as I'd highly recommend downloading the mobile to do as well as downloading the to do app to your uh, to your device. Um, and when you click into your settings here, the last thing I'll show you before we kind of wrap up is that when you get in here, this is where you can choose to sync the different variables that you want. Like if you want to sync planner and flagged email, you could choose to do that or not by just clicking on settings and, uh, and, and customizing your experience here in the settings. And that's really easy to do. Again, it's just clicking on your name here at the top and hitting settings. And that's where you can manage all of that. So, so basically, this is how you pull everything into a consolidated view in the to-do app, and it allows you to then uh, manage your virtual and digital to-dos much easier with less time. And hopefully, your team members. Hopefully, you'll give yourself more sanity. You'll be more accountable to your team members, and feel like you really have a good handle on all the things that you're responsible for executing. So. Recommended items. If there's anything there that resonated with you, please identify those. Write them down now. Uh, if there's anything that you want to try, take some baby steps. So if you want to try and get yourself mentally into the behavior of uh, flagging emails versus unread or start using Planner or maybe download the to-do app, whatever those things are, try and take some of those baby steps in the next 24 hours. Uh, please join us for future training sessions. We're doing these every other week. Um, at this juncture, anyway, we're doing them every other week. Uh, check out our existing video library. Stephanie's going to post 
uh, link to that as well as it'll be in the reminder or the follow up email. And, you know, um, we're trying to do more and more collaboration with our clients um, and community members uh, with Microsoft 365 and help people uh, use these tools better because most of the time you're already paying for them. So let's try and help to see if you can use them better. So reach out to us if there's anything you think we can do to help with Microsoft 365. Finally, I really want to thank everyone for attending today. Uh, and uh, watching uh, the managing digital to do's in a virtual world and uh, we want to open it up for questions. But before we open for questions, last thoughts is uh, for those of you who have to drop off now. Thanks for attending. You will get a follow up email with a link to the recording. For those of you who can stick around, please start posting questions and we'll pause for questions right now. Awesome. Thanks, Nate. There's a couple of them already in there if you want to get Great. started on those. Awesome. Um, so the first one's in uh, relation to Outlook. Um, they're asking if you need to have the conversation view um, engaged, I mm. guess, in order to use the cleanup function. You, you do not. It's a great question. I thought originally, I remember originally when I learned about that capability, I thought you did have to have the conversations view enabled to do the cleanup, but you do not. And I don't think I have any email strings that I can use as an illustration, but um, yeah, you do not have to have the conversation here um, checked, this box checked in order to do cleanup. It's just that you um, you won't see it as easily because uh, when you don't have the conversation view checked, you won't necessarily know that there's a whole bunch of conversations here because those emails could be over different time frames. But uh, to to the very beginning of this conversation, we talked about how uh, that um, the Outlook is a very personalized experience. One of the things that I found is that the view as conversations is one of those capabilities that people either like or they don't like. Uh, and so, um, yeah, that is not a requirement and you can use the cleanup uh, conversation regardless of whether or not you have the conversation view checked. Great question. Awesome. The second question here is regards to planner. They're asking if you could explain some of the key differences between like planner and Trello is the one there specifically. Yeah, great. Out. Good question. So I am not intimately familiar with Trello, but I will pull up planner um, and I'll just uh, use action items here as the example. So uh, there's a lot of capabilities that you can do with planner and at a high level or on a high level, I would say that planner is a project management light tool. So one of the key things that I have heard again, I haven't actually used Trello, so I don't know all the idiosyncrasies or nuances or differences. However, one of the things that I have heard is that what Planner is not able to do as an illustration is they're not able to create dependencies. So hypothetically speaking, let's say that I needed Stephanie to complete this task of get location identified before I could work on the agenda. Now, this example isn't that great because I could work on the agenda before Stephanie gets the location identified, but I can't create a dependency so that once Stephanie clicks this one as being complete, uh, that it notifies me or says, all right, Nate, now you're ready to work on agenda. It doesn't do dependencies. Now, what I can do is I can, of course, notice I've scheduled this one to be 12-9 and this one to be due 12-11. I can stagger due dates, right? But it doesn't necessarily have again, the, the dependencies uh, that some more sophisticated project management tools have. So um, this is really more of a, a team view into individual tasks. Um, now those individual tasks can be grouped in different ways, but ultimately they're still individual tasks. So I think that's really that one of the differences between um, uh, Trello and Planner, even though you can look at it from a charting perspective, like Gantt chart kind of perspective, you can do things like that. Uh, when you look at due date, if I want to group by um, due date, for example, it can give me different ways to look at the data. I just clicked on charts up here, um, or I can look at it from a schedule perspective and see where things are located on the agenda, right? But ultimately, um, if, if Planner is not giving you the visibility or the tasks that you want, it probably means that it's not uh, sophisticated enough or it doesn't have enough feature rich capabilities to solve your project management needs. So that's probably my best answer uh, for that one because I don't know the specific details of Trello versus Planner, but that's what I've heard. Awesome, thanks Nate. There's uh, no further questions in the QA panel right now. All right, well, since we're on Planner really quick, again, I do want to illustrate that this, this capability of making it an app 
it's it's pretty cool because Planner is one of those uh, um, web applications that's built into Microsoft 365 that doesn't actually have a desktop app. Now, To Do does. Uh, Outlook does, Teams does, but Planner doesn't. So one of the ways you can do that, if again, if you're in the um, the Edge browser, is you can come up to the um, the little breadcrumbs here, click on it, go to apps, and say install this site as an app. That allows you to kind of basically create a shortcut if that makes sense for you. You don't have to, of course, but that's something that I like to highlight. But the other item I wanted to show in Planner is that I illustrated that if you're in the My Tasks, which is these are every all the tasks assigned to me. Um, and if I want to then integrate those or link those to my calendar, I can click on the little breadcrumbs up here and click add my task to my Outlook calendar, but I don't have to do all of my tasks. One of the things I could do is let's say I only wanted the marketing action item plan to sync to my calendar. I can do the same thing. I just go to the breadcrumbs up here and I can click add plan to Outlook calendar. So, um, that's just one of the ways if I if I just want to do one of the plans to my calendar versus every task to my calendar, this is the way I could look at that because um, this would give me visibility to the entire plan. So there's different ways to do that and to integrate because um, that to do doesn't necessarily give you this visibility in your Outlook, uh, but of course you can either go into Planner, you can uh, lay it over on your calendar and your in Outlook. Um, but ultimately, uh, having the fact that this consolidates into do is a is a really uh, beautiful thing in my mind. So. Uh, all right, I'll pause for any other last questions before we sign off, but that was one of the things I wanted to show um, is that the difference between all of your tasks integrating into your calendar versus just maybe a plan. So, <laughs> puppy question? Yeah, obviously, <laughs> she continues to bark. Um, there is one more question here asking uh, if you have any recommendations on how to efficiently create a task that multiple people need to complete. Mm. Yeah. Um, great question. OK, so I'll go back to I'll use um, planner here as an example inside of inside of the team. So let's say you're in a department meeting and uh, you have uh, let's say this work on agenda is something that we want to have multiple people. You can actually assign multiple people. So I can actually add uh, Gerald and I'll add Stephanie. So this is one of the ways you can add multiple people is is uh, to this. But there's there's a couple different ways you might choose to interact with that, right? So you could build out the checklist. So that's one of the checklist items you could do. You could say, uh, so J, I'm gonna do JH, uh, please do this, and I could say SK, uh, please do that, right? So that's one of the ways in which you could um, have subtasks associated with a parent task and trying to delineate between who's responsible for what, because that would be the trick um, if you didn't want to copy the task or have do multiple tasks, because that's the other way to do it. Is you could have multiple tasks, but if you wanted to have an individual one, uh, you could do it this way. Um, the other thing you could do is add things in, in notes uh, as well, but one of the things I like, for instance, let's say Gerald completed his part. Um, Gerald, or let's say I completed my part because I'm the one typing, so let me use that as an example. So, uh, hey all, uh, I just, completed my part of the agenda um, C attachments so what I could do uh, so I could actually then add an attachment but then I click send and so that actually notifies everyone that's on this list um, that at time date stamps what I did I can put notes in there as far as saying hey Stephanie you're ready for your part or Gerald you're ready for your next part um, I could add an attachment that we could then all access uh, in that spot um, so this is a way where you could have multiple people. Um, you could either use notes to create to delineate. You could create uh, task the little checklist here where you could denote who's responsible and you could also then communicate with each other uh, if you're not sitting in the same room or virtually on a Teams meeting or something like that uh, communicating. You could use the um, the comments function here that'll give you a running list of kind of a status update on that respective task uh, before someone might come up here and click complete. So those are the different ways uh, other than just creating duplicates of the task. So that's another thing you could do uh, is you could come up here. Uh, if you click on the little breadcrumbs, you could copy the task. So if you wanted to actually maybe you built out a task that is um, is something that you want to repeat, let's say putting together like putting together your annual plan, put together your annual budget. Well, maybe it's the same things for the marketing team, the sales team, the operations team, uh, finance team, et cetera, right? So you could build out that model template in a task and then you could say copy task. And now um, I can say who it goes to, what plan it goes to, 
um, and hit copy. And so now I can have a, a whole uh, an, that I can have that task copied down here. So um, that's an example of where um, you can do that. So these are the two um, agenda ones that I just copied. So that's another way to do it too, um, as far as is, is having one task that multiple people are responsible for, or if you have one template that you want to copy to multiple people, um, those are a couple different ways to do that. I hope that answered the question. Um, it's hard sometimes to know the nuances via a text question, but hopefully that helped. Yeah, I got a couple more here and this one, next one too, we might need some further data on. All so right. um, they're asking if you can combine apps and teams. For instance, can you have a planner that also uses is a wiki or incorporates files a planner that also incorporates a wiki or files um so i don't think inside of teams you can however one of the things that i um let me let me see an example here if i can go to add an attachment um so what i would i here's what i would recommend doing like for instance if you were going to add a, a, an attachment i i probably wouldn't um i probably would be using links the the, the short answer to the question is for what you're trying to do, I would use links. Um, Microsoft and the 365 tools have done a good job, in my opinion, of making it easy to reference the same information from multiple places. Not, re not copy the same information in multiple places, but reference the same information from multiple places by doing a link. So for example, let's say I do want to attach a link here. Um, I'm actually going to go I'm going to use, I'm going to go to office.com. I'm going to go to my, uh, I'm actually going to go to SharePoint to give you an example. Um, so let's say I'm going to go to the marketing team here in SharePoint and I want to um, reference something from our document library. So I'm clicking on the documents here and I'm going to grab a file, this document one. Let's say this is a, a agenda. I'll just rename this. So let's, let's rename this agenda. Let's a uh, holiday agenda, right? So now that's re renamed as Holiday Agenda. So I want to get a link to this. Uh, so I'm going to copy a link, right? That's going to take a second. Copied. All right. So it's copied and it says people that can link. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to my planner and uh, oops, I'm in Teams. I'm going to do that. Sorry about that. So I'm in. Uh, here's what I want to do. I'm going to paste that link here. So now I want to say um, better get rid of that. OK, that's good. Um, this is the Holiday agenda hit save okay so now um, one of the things that should be happening i don't do this very often but um, it actually is a link to the agenda so if i click on this hopefully it opens up in a browser and opens up that word document which is what exactly what it's doing i did sales meeting agenda but um, so that's something where you can start combining um, so you're not like copying this document or, or inserting this document inside your planner you're actually linking to um, to that document from really the marketing team site, because I'm in the marketing team as that example, um, where I can also show you, let's say, um, see notes in the wiki. I believe uh, you can also, um, I'm gonna, I think I have to close out of this because I think I have a meeting agenda and notes. I think you can do links here too. So can I link to this? Yeah, so I can copy a link to this notes. So let's say it's this standing meeting agenda or it's the uh, November 19th meeting. I think I can copy link to this notes, copy to the clipboard. I can go into the action items. I'm going to pop up that working agenda again, and then I'm going to put in here's the link, see notes and wiki paste. Now, of course, that is a little awkward uh, because of just the way it, it pastes, um, but let's see how it works. All right, so I'm going to click on that again. So now if I click on that link, it opens up um, open. Yes, try and open up the Teams app. It opened it up right to there. So uh, that I think is maybe what you're trying to get at in the question. So forgive me, I know questions don't always uh, the way the text comes across, but so you, you can't necessarily combine the apps, but you can cross reference. And that's I think the best thing where when you're referencing documents or links or conversations or in posts, uh, you could start referencing all this information. Like, for instance, I could also make a post here. Uh, if I say new conversation, I'm going to click on this little um, A down here, which gives me a little bit formatting opportunity. So um, a meeting notes um, link, and then I can come in here. Like here are, are the meeting notes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to 
highlight this and I'm going to click this little indicator right here so where I can insert the link. So instead of that long string that makes it a little awkward, um, I'm going to click this button here and I'm going to hit um, paste that link that we just did here. And so now I'm going to send that conversation. So now uh, I've created a link to the conversation and then I can just click on that and that in theory should open up the meeting notes that we just copied the link to. So um, that's again an example of where you can cross reference the different resources. It doesn't combine the apps per se, um, but that's where you can reference your SharePoint library. You could reference a wiki and notes um, and you could reference that in posts and you can just um, cross reference that all over the place. Now the key is when you do that is the places from which you're cross referencing. So for example, let's say I'm in the operations team and I'm trying to link something from the operations team into the marketing team. Well, if the marketing team doesn't have access to this information down here, you could give them a link, but they won't be able to view it because the permissions are such that they can't view it. So you do have to be aware of how you're cross-referencing to make sure that the information that you're sharing, you're sharing it with people who have access to that information, right? Um, and that's so, because it is intelligent to know across all of the systems uh, who is a part of what team and what group to have access to information. But otherwise, that'd be the best way to do it is cross-referencing using linking. Awesome, and they did uh, say that that answered it perfectly, so that Great. was what they were looking for. So awesome. thank you. <laughs> All right, last question I have here. Um, just ask if there are samples of how other organizations are using Teams in these apps so that they can copy their success. <laughs> yeah, wow, that is a big one. Okay, so um, this is where, uh, so a couple things. One, the biggest thing that I recommend and that I found to be successful uh, in not only in our organization, but across other organizations, and this is by no means perfect and the only way to do it, but is identifying some of the operational workflows or operational methods that this can help you solve. So that's why we started this session, for example, um, uh, going into like, what are the common problems we're trying to solve, right? We're not trying to tell you, here's how, here's, here's all the cool stuff you can do with to do. I'm trying to relate it to common problems that we have. And so by doing that, we've identified a couple key ways. Um, one of them, if you're a department leader or a supervisor, for example, uh, and you have and you do weekly or biweekly team meetings, figure out like I would recommend watching a couple of videos that we have on structuring your department meetings in teams uh, because it, it basically starts building a way for your team to have access to all the information that they need on a regular basis by building that into your team meeting and kind of it kind of forces everybody's hand to at least on a weekly basis or bi-weekly basis to actually engage with teams or engage with plan or engage with SharePoint. So that's the best way that I found is find some different operational ways to use these tools in, in your workflow. One-on-one uh, -on -one meetings is another example, um, but even if you're not a department supervisor or department head, you know maybe you can volunteer or help your team and say, hey, I'd like to show a way where we might be able to consolidate this and see if you can get your team um, using some of these tools. I mean, because ultimately if your team doesn't use things like Planner, that's been a frustration that I've had as we've tried to even drive adoption in our organization is that if, if different teams aren't using the same tools, me as an individual, it makes it that much harder for me to hold myself accountable and, and be accountable to my team members um, because, because I'm trying to manage to-dos and action items across different platforms and different tools. So, um, so that's the way I would challenge you to think about it because because you could build this without driving adoption. And so driving adoption, we've done a session on driving adoption. We've done sessions on how to structure this operationally in multiple different ways. So that would be the second thing I would say is we've got a bunch of video library um, items that are out there that, that are talking about how to structure this for your team, how to run your team meetings using Teams, uh, how to structure your one-on-ones uh, and some other variables. So that's um, the best practices that I've found so far. Is, is finding ways that when you're doing cross-functional groups or department meetings or one-on-ones, find ways to use these tools. Because ultimately I believe that the adoption will come because it actually is easier once you get used to it, because there are some things that are, it's change, but once you get used to it, it is actually easier to navigate and get access to the information that you use on a day-to-day -day basis. So um, 
there's so much more like talk about that, but relative to the time we have, uh, that's probably my best answer is thinking about it that way and then um, checking out some of the video tutorials that are designed to do exactly that and uh, to help you take your first steps. And the other thing is, you know, if we can help because we, that's one of the things we do is we do training with team members on department heads and department leaders to help them do that stuff. Um, we help build out, uh, consult to build out structures of these these um, these teams as well. So if, if you're struggling with that, because it is a lot, uh, we've been doing it for years, um, by all means, reach out. We'd be happy to help. Awesome, Nate. I think that's it. All right. Well, geez, thanks everybody for all the great questions. Uh, awesome, uh, great, clear. It helped me go deeper on some items, which is I loved being able to do. Uh, and I appreciate the challenge on the link question because that was when I was I was hoping that I was uh, reading through between the lines, so to speak, on that one. So thanks for watching. I hope this was valuable. If it was, please share it. Uh, we'd love to be able to help as many people as we can with this stuff. Um, but ultimately, thank you for attending. We hope to see you soon. And uh, just take care of each other out there. Um, it's kind of a crazy world going on right now. So thanks a lot. Take care, and we'll talk to you later.